Okay, we've got, uh, looks like three people, I think, they are going to come up um, to suffer my wrath or whatever. Um, so, Jeff Durbin from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm, I'm very good. I'm good. A, lot, a lot happier now, yeah. That's okay. I only get to use this once a year, so I have to... So you're going to play pantomime for us. Uh, what year are you in at IUP? I'm a senior. Fantastic. And what are your plans? Um, right now I'm working on finishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll probably get a cheeseburger and then, um... <laughs> are you a performance major, education major? Education. Or? Great. Fantastic. And are you from uh, around IUP? Uh, Harrisburg area. Gotcha. Okay. You happy? Yeah. Good. <laughs> and uh, how much of this do you want to play for us? Why don't you just... You're ready for the whole shebang, I assume. You can stop me whenever. Okay. okay. Oh, stop. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead and is this in your way? No. How about now? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, I'll just play for a little bit. And then I won't stop you after this. <laughs> Fantastic, very pretty. Yeah. I really like this piece. You like this? Me too. I mean, uh, Phil Sparks not here, right? Uh, I really like his music. Unfortunately, if you've heard, you know, after you've heard a few, then you you sort of got the idea. But um, <clears throat> I, I mean, I'm sorry, but they they tend to stray in the same direction. Um, you're playing this very beautifully. What's, what's your, what are your thoughts about the opening? What are my thoughts? Either about how you want to play it, or how you thought you played it, or what you think it, where you think it should go. I think it should go forward. Okay. It's easy for the motion to stop, because you have this huge yeah. short note, then a long note, and a short note, then a long note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Um, what about if you were to add an emotion, or a, um, a picture, or do you ever do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, have you done that on this? And <laughs> yes, good. And right. is it okay if I find out what that is? <laughs> A picture, or, I don't know, something. Oh, great, yeah. soaring. So okay. Um, right now, you're not flapping hard enough to, to get takeoff. Okay, okay. because it, you're there's. Um, <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry, but you're. The, it, it's as though the, this is as much, this is as far as you want the sound to go. And uh, the thought of soaring is perfect, a great visualization for this. And for that to happen, we want to send it right out of the building, okay? So, and what you want to, with the wind, right? I mean, the wind is going to be the thing that carries it. Uh, I don't know how many have done those, those breathing exercises that they're in the breathing gym and there are lots of places, but the one with the paper airplane and you, you sort of visualize sending the airplane. Um, that might be a good visualization for this. It combines a, um, a creative thought with a tangible thing. I'm going to use the wind to send this thing forward. Because right now, they're not getting as much of it as they'd like to. You're playing very nicely. They want more of it. Okay. Right? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> pitch between the two notes was better than the first time. Um, now, um, is the sound of the first note, are you happy with the sound of the first note? I was not. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> play me an E flat that you are happy with. Okay. I ignore the fact that that's the first note of the piece. You're just going to play a happy, nice, pretty B flat, or E flat. <laughs> Right, and you're hung up in 
I've got to play this piece, and it's on Dante Semplice, <laughs> and it's quarter on equal 60, and my piano player hasn't shown up yet. And <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's, oh, that's it. That's as hard as it has to be. That's gorgeous. Play just like that. And when you get to here, it's just, it's just an extension of this, right? I mean, you're just further exploring this octave idea. Okay. Now I've got you a little bit spooked. I mean, it's a weird, you know, it's like here's this goofball <laughs> telling me to do all this stuff. Um, the, the, the tone is better, but do you notice there's a little at the beginning? Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that you experience often? Sometimes. Okay. Um, give me just the, start at the beginning again. Uh, actually, let's, let's do a little exercise first. Um, oh, the easiest way I understand, that I can communicate to any player or teacher or student or whoever on how to breathe and play is Oto. I think I heard Pat say it. I don't remember who I heard say it. But Oto is the quickest, shortest way to get from point A to point B. And I'll take 10 minutes to explain that to you. But <laughs> <laughs> that's as hard as it has to be. And right now you've got a hiccup on the toe. You've got a <gasps> And so what happens is the pressure builds up and you get this sort of explosion. So you want the first note to begin as close to the toe. <laughs> Not that toe, toe as possible, okay? okay. <gasps> Try that. I don't know if that's helpful or not. We'll find out. Perfect, perfect. Now we want to clean up the beginning of that first note, right? It's a faith thing. It's almost a trust thing. Like you have to believe that it's going to come in at the right spot. The tongue is hitting hard because it, that's your insurance policy. In case it doesn't come out, I'll go, okay? Believe that it's going to be there. Toe. <gasps> And what's the, what's the physical sensation? Was that harder or more easy to do? That was more easy to do. Yeah. We, we, we can take something, we can make this as hard as we want to, or we can make it as easy as we want to. It doesn't have to be any harder than what you just did. The, the pressure of playing for people or for a grade or for a, a, an audition spot for a job or for a contest, that's the stuff that forces us to have all these insurance policies. Well, in case this happens, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll this, I'll eat 14 turkey sandwiches and three bananas so that I'm not nervous. And okay, You know what I mean? Like you do all this sort of crazy mind game stuff, but if you keep it as simple as possible, this whole keep it simple stupid thing it goes a long way with me. You know, just... As, I, try and, um, I try and have as, le as little tension as possible. I'm not... Uh, sometimes I'm sort of kinetic, but I don't tend to be a real sort of uptight person. And I don't know where you are on that scale, but the more sort of chilled you can be, I think, for lack of a better term, uh, the better. It's not to say that you're not focused. It's not to say that you don't care, but it's that um, you're going to get in your own way. You're going to get in your own way. If you have tension, you're not going to be able to soar. I'm going to flap really hard. <laughs> you know, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get lift off. So, all right. Um, play for a while, all right? I'm going to stay out of your way. I'll shut up. Twice as loud, just as an example. Keep the wind moving. Out the door. Still louder, louder. I told you to play twice as loud. When I told him to play twice as loud, and he played louder, I'll ask you first. Did it feel like it was twice as loud? It did. Did it sound twice as loud? No. no, no. no. That's the thing. Is we get the, the amp is right next to our head, and we know what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So it sounds twice as loud, and it feels twice as loud. But to them, it's just sort of, yeah, it went up another notch. But the difference was that the tone quality was better, and the direction, they, they were let in on it now. 
They know where we're trying to go with it. You know what I mean? Getting a, where, do you practice in a small room, big size room, different size rooms? Uh, different size. Yeah, get into some bigger rooms and put some people at the far end of it and ask them um, wh what it sounds like. Because you, you'll be surprised or set up a tape deck at the other end of the room. Because it's got to be, it's, what you're doing is great and we want in on it. It's the first thing that I said, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it, it felt like twice as loud and it wasn't. It was the right amount louder. You know what I mean? You have to really, you have to really exaggerate to make a big difference. You know, I mean, you've got a piano has to be ridiculous and forte has to be wow. And yours are all sort of conservative because, well, this is artificial. This is sort of weird. But the amp is right next to your head. You know what I mean? So you, and and you have the map. We don't have the map. You've got the map. So we're, you know, we're. You've got to be more specific with us. Okay. Why don't you give us? Why don't you give us some of the? Um, what are we doing? Two thirty. Yeah. Okay. Give us some of the fast stuff. Okay. Uh, player's choice. See? Great. <laughs> Let's do let's do something. Play at half speed. Or not half speed, but slower. Don't worry about the technique of it. Worry about telling the story. You're not communicating your idea. That's this is we're communicating. The idea is that we're communicating with sound to all these people. And they want to know what you think about this piece. Most people know this tune, but whether they do or they don't, um, they want to know your take on it. They know they want to know. They want to be led on a, on a journey. It's a movie or it's a, a, a book. or it's, it's, It happens in time, you know what I mean? It's a, at, at this o'clock, this happens, and it goes on for a while, and then it's over. It's a story. It's an event, and you're not taking this anywhere right now. Be more deliberate. So go slower, but give us a better idea. So under tempo, but with a clearer sense of how you think the tune should go. Okay, twice as loud, same thing. Um, it's, a, it's, it's what I told you, you know what I mean? That was closer, but it's always got to be that way. There's some tension I notice up in here. I don't know, do you, do you, when you play, be aware of these spots right here, okay? This sort of area is where I tend to see it with you. The other thing I notice physically in your setup is that you're a little, the, the, the weight of the horn shifts our center of gravity a little bit, and you're sort of compensating by leaning forward, which is not a very stable position. So maybe sit back on your heels a little bit more. I like that you, you seem fairly well balanced between left and right. Good news. Now, if, maybe you want to settle back in a little bit more, more on back on the hips. Try at the beginning, uh, try here again a little faster. I'm just going to watch the setup a little bit. <laughs> Okay, are your knees locked? I can't tell. Are they back like this? A little bit. Okay, so I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's sort of a big deal. This is not the heaviest thing in the world, but it's heavy enough that it makes us do strange things. You know what I mean? We're gonna, I'll address your right hand in a second. But, so don't lock your knees, but you know, a, little, a little buoyancy <laughs> for you Navy folks. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's more stable. Now, let's talk a little bit about the right hand. Your right hand setup is, is um, you're, turn this way so they can see what you're doing. Uh, does that feel comfortable to you when you play? Yeah. You're used to it. Okay. All right. Um, uh, do this for me so that they can sort of see what I might, might yell at you about. But keep playing. All right. So start wherever you, somewhere in here. We're going to pay attention to your right arm. Keep playing. We've got to give a view to these guys. Okay, you've, you've solved one problem and created another for yourself. Um, by putting your thumb under the bar, um, you have removed the possibility that you can support much of the weight of the horn with your right hand. We get into trouble um, when the hand 
uh, you, you more often see you more often see this, where you jam your thumb under and the wrist is at an angle like this. Okay, that's the more typical thing to see, and you've sort of compensated the other way. Either somebody told you or this just felt more normal. I'm going to tell a story about Roger Barron right now. <laughs> um, when I was getting ready for the Air Force Band audition in whatever, 1990-whatever, um, I, well, I really can't remember what year it was. Um, I was working on the uh, excerpt for Festive Overture and would be playing the over and over and over again. And at some point in the practicing, my fingers would stop. I would say, yo, fingers, there's still notes to go. And they'd say, yeah, well, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Um, and so I'd just sort of shake it out and would rest for five or 10 minutes and wouldn't really think anything of it. And I'd come back and I could play again. Everything was cool. Um, and then I won the gig. Life's good. Made it to, I don't know if that was that summer or the following summer, something somewhere in there, we were playing this piece. And so I was working on the lick again, and the same thing happened. And I ran into Roger Barron somewhere. And, <laughs> and he said, I know it's not nice to say nice things about Roger Barron. There's like an unwritten rule, but I'm going to have to. <laughs> I'm going to have to say nice things about him. Uh, he goes, I know what you're doing. <laughs> OK. <laughs> he said, I bet you're jamming your thumb underneath it. It could have been here, for all I know. I mean, it could have been at the conference. And I was like. I thought about oh, God, but you're right. And I guess Dave Miles had, had experienced the thing where he had done it so much. Uh, I may have the story screwed up, but it, he developed quite a serious problem in his wrist and had to have sort of a splint built to prevent his wrist from going in either direction. And you can really screw things up pretty well if you go, I mean, that's not a natural position for your wrist. Now, you're not doing this, so I sh this is sort of unfair. You're doing the other thing, though. Your hand is in... The, the, the 50 cent version is that it's got to be as relaxed as possible. You should basically have, a, basically have a straight line between your tip of your elbow and your tip of your middle finger. Basically. If it's a little off, fine. In general, you don't want to support much of the weight of the horn with the right hand because um, it forces you to do all sort of goofy, wampus things. And then if you've got to do anything technical, you've got trouble right here. <laughs> but, um, you know, keep it as relaxed and fluid as possible. Now, the trick is, you know, how do you, how do you weigh that uh, literally and figuratively? Because the horn does, you know, like I said, it's not a thousand pounds. Actually, there's another story there. I was in the lobby <laughs> at, uh, I, I was wearing my Air Force band uniform. Now I'm out. I can tell this story now. And this gentleman came up to me who was a who, civilian who was coming to one of the concerts, and he said, how much does that instrument weigh? I said, 300 pounds. <laughs> he said, really? I was like, yeah, here. And he was like, Ooh. <laughs> But anyway. Turns out he was the base commander. No, um, <laughs> uh, it's not the heaviest thing in the world, but it's just heavy enough that you know, as you the longer you play, you start to get a little tired, and you start to support the weight a little bit with this hand. That's when you want to take a break. Put your arm down, rest. I use. Uh, hold on a second. I'm gonna pay no attention to the euphonium player behind the curtain. When I'm sitting, I have this block that that is foam and. Uh, Black tape. That's as hard as it gets. I probably stole this black tape from the Army Band five years ago. But when I sit, I use this block. You don't have to. You can support the weight if, if you want to. I find in band rehearsals, it's, it's great. It works a lot better because then I don't have to worry about page turns or he's going to work with the cornets or he's going to work with the whatever. And then it allows me to sort of think more about what I'm doing there. It was an awful long-winded way to say, chill the right hand out. Keep it as relaxed as possible. Oto, keep the arm chilled out. I'm gonna, we've got other people to abuse, so I'm gonna let you. Thank you very much. Great job. It was nice to meet you, Jeff. Thanks for playing. Uh, next, I have uh, Fred Meyer is listed. I think Fred. Neil Corwell wrote it, so I'm not sure what it says. Could be Dave. Wow, I made all these people really mad. Why are you on a... you wrote in on. How are you? Thanks for okay, playing. so far. <laughs> well, thank you. What are you going to play for us? Well, I, I had intended to play the Spark Fantasy. Whoops. <laughs> oh, no. But, see, uh, but, now I'm going to get... Somebody's going to... Now, see... Now Fancy hates Philip Spark. Yeah. But I, I thought I'd give you some choices. Kleiner, oh, okay. Since, yeah. I really like Philip Spark's music. I mean, that's... I really like potato chips, and I eat way too many of them. <laughs> I, this, I'm, this is coming off all the wrong way. I mean, I really, 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 genuinely, honest to goodness, like his music. Um, and it's not the deepest 
music in the world, and I don't think he would pretend that it is. You know, I mean, I think it's music to be listened to and to be enjoyed. <laughs> Guess I, uh, well, Moving right along. That's we'll right. Pick another piece. <laughs> yeah. um, why don't you do? We're going to do some Kleinerd. Is that okay? okay. He's gonna, right. uh, we've got the Fred Kleinerd Sonata for unaccompanied euphonium or trombone. <clears throat> and then, uh, which movement do you want to do? Uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Take your pick. Well, why don't you go ahead and start at the top? <laughs> You're in what the tenth military division band? Did Mountain I say that right? Band. Mountain division band. I'm sorry. New York. Okay. I'm just offending it all. <laughs> we called lots of things up there, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> and is your primary job playing euphonium? You play tr euphonium and trombone. You play a variety of th what do you? Uh, whatever they need me to. Mostly gotcha. euphonium. Ocarina. Yeah. Well, no. Mostly euphonium. Sometimes trombone. Uh, okay. Yeah. More euphonium than anything. Yeah. Okay. They, just when they're short trombones, I fill on them. In the marching band and stuff. Oh, okay. You know, when nobody really cares what we sound like. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold out. We're in the mountains. Take a horn. I don't care. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing about the Tenth Mountain Division. The mountains are about sixty miles away. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we're just kind of out on the flat plain by the lake. <laughs> that's good. That's the army, right? <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> ah, that's true. Yeah, you can. I'm out now, man. <laughs> yeah, I can. I can say whatever. I want. <laughs> I already got the check. So. Oh, they didn't cash it. I actually do that. For, um, okay. Uh, do you have an idea of how you want to sound? You have a euphonium in your head. You know this whole horn in your head versus the horn in your hands thing. Do um, you have an idea of where you want it to go? The tone quality. And how, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how successful are you in replicating the sound that's in here? Um, or here? Still working, on it. still working on it. Still working on it. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Um, what... In what way are you working on it? Well, I just got a new mouthpiece yesterday, so that's a start. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what uh, What was What did you hear in your sound that you were? What are you trying to change? Um, trying to give it a little more richness and uh, have an edge when I need to. Like in this opening, there are some spots where you could put a little edge on the sound, and it would sound okay, I think. Okay. Hey, I told the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my wife, actually. Yeah, it's got to be. Um, okay, let's try something that's not mouthpiece oriented. Uh, this is zero, ah is ten. Okay, zero is closed the other way. Ten is as wide open as you can play. Okay, play me a, an E and just hold it. Don't do the crescendo. Just play an E. Okay. Now with that is zero and that is ten, tell me where you are. You can't answer incorrectly. Probably about a four or five. Four. We'll call it a four. Play a two. We're all familiar with that sound, right? Okay. Now play a, play the four or five, wherever you where the comfortable is. Wait a minute. That's no four or five. Right? That's is that the same sound that you made a second ago? Is that the same sound you made a second ago? Yeah. So so play a six. Okay, and now just just for giggles, play a ten. <laughs> okay, now you have a camera lens, and you're gonna you know you when you man, if you have a manual focusing lens, you have to adjust the aperture, right? 
don't think about this aperture, the lens. It's going to be in focus or it's going to be out of focus. And the way you find out is you just keep turning it until it looks clear, right? Well, here, uh, uh, that's the lens, okay? You're going to manipulate that until you get the clarity or the, I forgot the word that you used, rich? Until you get the rich sound that you want. Use that as the barometer. Mm. Yeah, barometer, lens, whatever. Metaphor you want. Great, right? So, is this the mouthpiece you bought yesterday? Yes. Okay, well, I know Doug, so I won't tell you to take it back. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we, we can tell ourselves that it's the equipment. And to some degree, I'm not going to get into a big equipment thing. I'm not a big equipment junkie. I got a, when everybody asks me, well, what mouthpiece do you play? I got a, I got a 51D in 1984, and it, it works pretty good. It's a different one. It's not the same. I cleaned it a couple times, too. But <laughs> the, I guess maybe it's my Midwest neuroses. If I hear something in my sound or in my playing that I don't like, I blame myself first. I'm doing something weird. I'm doing something wrong. I'm not getting the, I don't blame, and I'm not saying that, you do, that you've done this, because you're on a journey. You know, you're trying to find the sound that you're looking for. But, um... I, I I always look to myself first because I know chances are it's my own fault. <laughs> I mean, the history has told me that I'm doing something strange. I'm not getting the sound that I want. Start with the equipment. Plus, sometimes I'm cheap too. So I find well, well, I'm gonna buy another mouthpiece, but because uh, I'm not in the Air Force anymore either, I can't make them pay for it. So I'll see exactly. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, you're the, yeah. I need 17 mouthpieces uh, in case the mountains no, get the closer. Player. I just need four or five. <laughs> Yeah, and they have like the weighted bottom caps and the top caps, and sure, yeah, yeah. shirts. <laughs> okay, give me the beginning. And now the idea is that you're going to stay at that whatever number it was. What was the happy number? Six. Six, six is the happy number. Um, by the way, six is the happy number. So <clears throat> start at the six and play now. Ah, give us this opening with that whole, that rich sound that you can play, that we now have proof that you can play. Okay, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, pay attention to what happens right here. In fact, play, and I'm going to touch you right there. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, go ahead and play. To me, I, I don't want to speak for you. To me, this is a much more pleasurable experience. This is a much more vivid sound, and it's a much um, clearer idea of where you're going. You're communicating now, in my opinion. Um, and you were aware of what I, what I was going at, right? Because as soon as you start to crescendo, as went the crescendo, so went your elbow, or your shoulder. Ba-da-da! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm just basically a dork. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you're good at it and you can get away with it. I've been a dork for all my life. Of course I'm good at it. <laughs> 38 years of trying, 37, I don't know. Um, I don't even know how old I am. That's pathetic. <laughs> so you're, you're getting there, though. But do you, mean, you know what I mean? And is it closer to what you're hearing here? I think so, yeah. yeah, there's like this forest we sort of have to weed through. Like we know what we want it to sound like. And we just think, blam, blam, blam. Here's where I want it to go. Blam. Play. No, you just set all these obstacles in your way. Um, maybe part of it is this, judge, this idea that they're judging you. You know what I mean? And sometimes you are in a situation where you are being judged. But this is not a, these are not judgmental people. <laughs> these people want to hear you play really well. Right? Right. right. It's no fun if somebody comes up and... and it's painful for everybody in the room when somebody, is, when somebody up here is struggling. 
So it's, everybody sort of gets on edge, and everybody, everybody that's within earshot is rooting for you to play really well because they want to be taken on a journey. Okay? And that's the thing we forget. Sometimes we think they're, it's us and them. <laughs> they're going to throw things at me. They're going to say all sorts of bad things. They're going <coughs> to say, oh, well, he's no Steve Me. You know what I mean? They <laughs> get that whole thing. So what, man? You communicated or you didn't communicate? The point came across or it didn't come across? End of discussion. That's it. Give us some of the fast stuff. Uh, fast, I'm sorry, short notes ought to have the same uh, care as the long ones. The same tone quality, the same, uh, it should just be that they're over quicker. You know what I mean? If a painter makes a long stroke or a short stroke and it's a great painter, it, it's, it's great either way. Okay, they don't have these fantastic long strokes and then whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> more, give us more uh, richness on the short notes as well. This gets really, yeah, 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 nice job. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this piece, but there's all sort of weird meter change things that happen and you get accents in strange spots and you're, you're dancing through those minds pretty well. Um, the question I would ask you uh, rhetorically is can you hear all of the fast notes, the six notes? We want to hear every one of those notes. And how do you do that? Slow it down until you can get it clear. Yeah, half speed. speed. My, my whole thing, it's, it's, there's nothing new about this idea. I don't pretend that it is. But the fastest way to play fast is to play slow. You, the, quicker, the sooner you get to going half speed and living at half speed and going tempo de lerno, as, as Winston Morris would say, the better. The faster you're going to be able to play whatever the technical challenge is. Because you're going to start hearing the tune. You know that it's back it up, back it up, Bob, but could you tell me exactly what those notes are? That's a D flat, that's a G flat, that's a B flat, that's a whatever. And until you go slowly and methodically at half of Mach whatever, I mean, go, I, I, my general rule is half speed. I go at half speed. When I can play it at half speed, uh, the, my basic rule in my practice session is when I can go at, at half speed three times in a row perfectly, then I take it one click up. I don't, okay, I did slow practice, fine. Now let's try it at performance speed. No, a little slow, 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 slow. Tiny bits faster. Um, and it seems excruciating sometimes. But at the end of the day, you know the tune. You absolutely know the tune inside and out. And the other thing is you can take it at whatever tempo you want to. You know, I mean, if you feel like, you know, I think I was taking this too fast or not fast enough, you can, we can change those things. The other thing I would ask you is, and this is the thing when you're playing and you're performing, Ask yourself, can I hear all of the notes? Because sometimes we're so fixated on what's coming up ahead. There's these things and there's that and da 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 and I wore the wrong shoes and wait. But it's can I hear, do I hear the notes that I want to hear? That's the question you want to ask yourself. So there's two things. There's, and I guess it's sort of an aside, but the same way with, me, with my thinking that the more slow practice you do, the better able you'll be able to play fast. The more low playing you do, the better able you will be to play high. And I found that out quite by accident. Um, <laughs> despite my best efforts uh, to think otherwise, um, the, the low playing that I have done, especially I, when my daughter was little, uh, we lived in a townhouse and I put a practice mute in to play and I was working on Rochu down an octave. And um, I found, you know, it's really hard to play those down an octave anyway. Well, it, it can be hard to play those, especially if you're just starting to. With a practice mute in, it's even harder take the mute out the next day to go play, and all of a sudden, whammo bammo, I've got a minor third on the upper range without any, uh, without any time spent trying to work on the high register. Why? Air. Duh. No tension. Air. Works. Oh. Well, I thought you had to go ah, to get high notes out. <laughs> That's what always worked for me. <laughs> for three notes, and then I couldn't do it again. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the problem, is we think it's got to be... 
Ah, oh, good. <laughs> but if you've got a bunch of them in a row to do and you don't rely on the air, you're sunk. You know, you're, you're dead in the water. So, um, okay, I'm going to let you play. I keep saying I'm going to let you play longer. Go here so we can hear the end of the tune. So pick somewhere, maybe if you want to do this recap. <laughs> forgive every wrong note. You know what I mean? That's, a, that's an important thing to remember. If it's a, you know, there are exceptions to that. If you have somebody, I suppose, who's really cocky and they came out and like, eh, whatever, and they chip a note, everybody's like, yay! <laughs> 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 but not, you know, I mean, not, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you talked about wanting to have a little, uh, what, I, I can't remember the word you used. When you were talking, edge. edge, okay. You wanted to have a little bit of edge, and I want to challenge that thought a little bit. And to say that I want to be convinced that you can play loudly without edge before you start worrying about having some edge. In other words, if you want to have bring in coloration to your sound, let's make sure that your sound is okay before you start doing something to it. So make sure that high, middle, low, loud, soft, fast, slow, is, it's you. It's that tone quality, and you have that tone quality, so that when you want to nudge it and you want to make an effect, then the Armenian thing, there's a couple spots in there where it's like, Look out, boys, we're coming through. You know what I mean? Uh, that, you know, great. But hopefully, it's, it's like a variation on a theme. We know what your sound is, and so you, when you color it, then we know that you've, you've done it for a reason. It's not that I have this loud sound, that I, this one sort of thing. It's not this sort of schizophrenic thing. You know? um, yeah, enough said? Does that make sense to you? So I would encourage you to, in your warm-up, um, work on really loud work on really soft and work on really high and work on really low. You know, stretch all those parameters. Every day, every day, all of us should be, how much faster can I single tongue, double tongue, triple tongue? How much higher can I play? How much lower can I play? Not because you want to show off, but because that increases the size of our keyboard. You know what I mean? That's the, that's what we have. So if you can gain a couple notes down there and a couple of notes up there, wonderful. Then there's more notes that you can, that you can share with other people, okay? I've got one more to abuse. I'm going to let you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. And last is Jamie Lipton. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> I thought for sure you'd have left by now. No way, I'm out of here. He's a psycho. We'll probably just go till about maybe between 20 and 25 after so that we make sure that we don't mess up the next event. Pearls. Are you getting ready for Falcone? Um, Maybe. Falcone. Great. You're hoping that you're going to get to play this this summer. Great. And what year are you? Second year master's student. Oh, fantastic. Where did you do your undergrad? Northwestern. Cool. Right. Are you nervous? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> how does the nervousness, let's talk a little bit, is that okay? Uh, how does the nervousness manifest itself for you? Dry mouth. Dry mouth. I'd spit all over it, but you want my water? Uh, I'm good. Okay. Go figure. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, if you know that that's going to be a situation, then you can anticipate that, right? Uh, the other, what are other, is, is only dry mouth? Is that the only thing you experience? Pretty much. Okay. What are other things we'll experience? Tremors, right? If you have tremors, um, tremor is an indication that you've lost, there's an involuntary uh, muscular response going on. And so the way to alleviate that is to exaggerate it, and then you can stop it. You have regained control over that which you previously had not, okay? So that'll help. Sometimes you can bite your tongue for dry mouth. You can, there's all sorts of those tricks. Um, well, great. I'm sorry. I don't, and I hope that you don't think I'm, I'm making fun. I'm sorry. that I hope that I don't make it worse. <laughs> I've made it worse for everyone else. Why not you? 
<laughs> the other thing, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with one more thing um, about, about nervousness, and that is if it is something that you, uh, maybe I'm making too fine a point about you specifically, but many people, it's a chronic thing, uh, and there's a, uh, there are many, many methods. The, there's a book called Notes from the Green Room that is my personal favorite, and it's based, the reason I like it is that they looked, the guys who wrote this book looked at all of the literature, all of the research data on the different methods for dealing with performance anxiety. And um, they found that this method that, that was developed at the University of Michigan called stress inoculation therapy, for lack of a better term, SIT, was uh, the most successful non-chemical method. It, in fact, it was as successful as a non-drug method. And all it was is an inoculation like you would get a flu shot or anything else. And you put yourself through, um, there's no, I'm trying to think of the, audition success. I can't think of the man's name who wrote the book. Don Green, maybe? There's another book that sort of takes this idea and runs with it, specifically for musicians. Um, you put yourself in a situation that is not stressful for you at all. You play in a practice room by yourself. And then you add just a tiny bit of tension. Bring a friend in, or you're playing in a lesson. Uh, then, once you're comfortable doing that, then ratchet it up a little bit more. The only downside about this is that it forces you to plan ahead. You have to think far out in advance. So if you're getting ready for the Falcone and you're, gonna, you're getting dry mouth now or you're getting tremors or you're getting whatever, then you just sort of plot this timeline where you're going to continually increase the tension uh, so, until you're used to it at each of those levels so that you're able to deal with those responses. Okay? So it's just getting to know yourself better. I mean, it's more of a self-awareness thing than anything. Um, would you rather play, uh, would you feel more comfortable playing something lyrical or, more, or something more technical? I can play this. Great. <laughs> That's great. Ah, yeah. We're all grooving and you're all mad. Why are you out of here? That's great. That's fantastic. Do that for me again and exaggerate the, um, the emotive aspect. Be more of an actor, okay? What, uh, give me a, a word or an emotion or a picture or something about this. Um, angry. Okay. Be angrier. <laughs> Okay, that was angrier. You get you quit being angry when it gets softer. You can play soft and angry. You've got this great this opening is just awesome. Keep that through here when it gets a little softer, right? Do that again. Ah this is great. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good, good. I want you to keep going, and every time you have a note that's in the below the staff, play it ten times louder. Oh, we don't have any down there, do we? Trouble club. I, uh, well, I mean, you know, D, C's. When you get to these notes, they're not they're not coming out as well as the upper notes are. They're not as angry. Um, yeah, give me another spot. Or actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Do this again, and just dig this note out. When you get down here, yeah. <laughs> Do something ridiculous for me, okay? Okay. Uh, go at whatever speed you need to in order to make what I'm asking you to do uh, happen. Mm -hmm. Play it down an octave. Or low. Or low, I mean slower if you need to. 
Now with that same sort of oh, that great sound, go back to here in the regular octave. And this is gonna just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Don't be afraid of it. And you can't apologize for this. You know what I mean? This is not, this isn't No, um, but it, 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 we're the other end of the spectrum now. You know what I mean? So don't apologize for it. This isn't pretending to be pretty. Yeah, very primal. One more change. That was perfect. Crescendo to the bottom. And I think they'll get what they want. Is, it, is this a more pleasurable experience? Yes. Yeah. Is this a more pleasurable experience? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. That's great. You, you, you play great. You got nothing to apologize for. You got nothing to, to it's, they, man, ah, that's great. It's really fantastic. I'm sure you're going to do really well on this. Um, if I can leave you with anything, Oto, that's as hard as it has to be. Slow practice, low practice, and then don't be afraid to share what you have with the world. What you have to say, what you have to say, what you have to say with these instruments is as valid as anybody who came before you and who will come after you. I don't mean to get too pontificatory. <laughs> but I mean that. I, you know, I, I, I genuinely, honest to God, believe, exa I believe exactly that. What each one of you has to say is equally valid as any other. So say it. Don't be afraid to. This is just, yeah, go for it, okay? So that's what I'd like to leave you with. You play great. This is going to be wonderful. Thank you all very much for your time. Let's stick around for the next thing. Thanks very much. That's great. Thank you very much. It's really great plan.